And here is our guest of honor, Jeannie Colombo. You're welcome to you our have house. <laughs> have my house is your house for another year. Thank you. Me casa, she casa. Me casa, she that's good. It is a beautiful place. I'm yeah. sorry the sun's not shining right yeah. now, but it's going to come out. Yeah, the sun is going to come out. It has to. And here we have Patrick Joseph Ellis, Pat and Jim's first son, and he's, he's my grandchild. I love him to pieces. He's so cute. And that's Annie is holding him.
But there's a lot of stories that Aunt Janie and I uh, know, and as somebody said, she was always uh, a lot of fun, used to tell all of her jokes. I have to tell this one about my wife before it was, she wasn't my wife, but took her down to Parker, and brought her to Parkersburg one time, and I told her, I said, now you're going to meet my aunt down there that's a nun. And I said, now, I'll let you know ahead of time. So we was at Uncle's house, I think, there. And uh, so we went in, and uh, we was talking and talking, and I used to tell her about how Aunt Jeannie would tell jokes and everything, you know, really. Because, you know, in them days, everybody was straight-laced about everything. So anyway, Aunt Jeannie, I think, got up and went into the kitchen or something, get a cup of coffee for us or something, and Debbie says, well, when am I going to meet the after Janie was there talking to us for quite a while and telling a few jokes and that. And then Debbie says, well, when am I going to meet the one that was in front? <laughs> I said, you've been talking to her for quite a while now, you know. Bill. So, uh, and Janie has always been fun. And she's been uh, so much a part of my life that every time I've never missed the opportunity to be around her. And when I found out about two weeks ago that she was going to retire, I didn't know from what, but anyway, uh, that's what I always thought, you know, I didn't know what she was retiring from, but anyway, I said, whatever it is, it has to be good, so I said, well, we got to, hopefully, somebody will have something for her, and here we are today, and as you know, I want to say, it's been a pleasure, and I love you so much, God bless you. Thank you. I love you, I love you. All right, okay. Anything to begin with. But I was, this was forced on me. But I feel like, you know, at the Oscar night when they hand you the, they're giving you the Oscar kind of thing, and they pull out this big long letter and say, you know, first of all, I want to thank God and thank my mother and my father and, and my wife and my husband, and they go on and on. And it really and truly, it is what I want to do. I want to thank God for having me live this much longer. And I think that's why the light bulb went off in my head and it said, retire. And it wasn't that I, I, I loved my work, I loved what I was doing at the time, and I certainly have met many, many gorgeous, beautiful people, and some of you are standing right here today. And I do give thanks to God for you being my friends and for coming out here. Everyone in your own way, then just absolutely lovely. And my family, what more can I say about them? They just really have been very supportive of me. And Rita and Mary Carney and Asanja, all of them through my whole life here have just been absolutely beautiful. I have gorgeous neighbors and gorgeous friends who have come out and participated. And I just do get thanks for you being here, sharing this day. It's very, very special for me, too. Thank you. I was driving the other day, and Jean was talking to one of her, this was before she retired, talking to one of the guys, explaining about our family. She said, you know, when we grew up, she said, we were poor, we were really poor. She said, but we had plenty to eat, you know, at times. And she said, uh, and even my mother said she used to take in washing. She said then she'd keep it. <laughs> That's how she dressed us all. <laughs> and she also told me a story about a, a guy in the hospital was smoking so much, and Jean told him, said, why don't you quit smoking? The guy said, I can't quit smoking. She said, chew on toothpicks rather than smoke. So he chewed tooth toothpicks for about three or four months, and he died of Dutch, Dutch Elms disease. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I didn't want to stand up because of my posture, you know. And uh, it reminds me, when I was at, um, uh, one time I was traveling, I was in the hotel, I was going to stay one night. The guy said, you only have, we only have, uh, we don't have any rooms left. He said, I'll tell you what, if you want to stay with somebody, you can stay with that guy over there by the elevator. And, and the guy looked like me a little bit, you know, punk stomach and everything. And I said, why him? If you guys can tie each other's shoelaces in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else that has something to say or anything to say? Who else? Mary Beth. This will just be brief. Aunt Jeannie was my first grade teacher. She was, the, I mean, one year she was in Clarksburg. It was the year I was in first grade at St. Mary's grade school. And I had to, she gave me, pulled me over the corner and said, you can't call me Aunt Jeannie. You have to call me Sister Mary Jean. So the kids didn't believe she was really my aunt. So I brought pictures of her. She was in the full black habit with the veil and her long rosary beads. So I brought pictures of her in regular street clothes and brought them to the bathroom. 
She should have the kids, but she really looked like I would be <laughs> She had 52 kids in our first grade class, and one classroom by herself, and she would give have a coloring contest, and she and Marie Secret would meet in the hall to tell jokes, and she went away from us for a little while. But like she said, we went on a lot of vacations together. Um, Aunt Jeannie, my mom, and my sisters and I, and she would wait till a dark night and tell us scary stories about things that have happened and really get us going because we're all chickens anyway. And to make them realistic, she would say, and these are recorded in the archives and we <laughs> <laughs> But we, we love Aunt Jean very much. She's always been there for us, and she deserves this party today. Everybody here is a true testament to what, how everybody loves her and feels about her. We went to uh, Italy several years ago. I mean, 13 years ago, 12. We flew on the Holocaust the other line, which reminds me of a story. Maybe some of you have heard this, I don't know. This is not our trip, but it was another trip. The, uh, this airline, the Alitalia airline, was leaving Rome for New York Kennedy Airport. And he, he rose to about 30,000 feet and he came on the air and told the people, he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, this is you pilot. He said, we're going to have a nicer trip. He said, we're going to be in Kennedy Airport. He said, about uh, eight, eight and a half hours. He said, have a good time. Enjoy yourself. So he shut up. And and then uh, about an hour later, he says, ladies and gentlemen, he said, I've got some bad news for you. He said, uh, not too bad. He said, we're losing one engine. He said, but not too worry. He said, we're going to be okay. Be a little later getting into Kennedy Airport. So he said, uh, have another drink. So a couple hours later, he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, you're not going to believe this. He said, but we're losing one more, uh, one more engine. He said, but we got a two left. Not too worry. We're going to be okay. So he gets farther and farther into the, the trip. And then about three or four hours more later, he said, ladies and gentlemen, so we need the third engine. He said, but we got one more left. He said, have some pizza and drinks. He said, they're on me. So, so then about, with about an hour or so from Ken Gale, he said, ladies and gentlemen, i got to tell you bad news. He said, he said, we lose our last engine. He said, but the good news, I can see Kennedy Airport in the distance. He said, so those of you who can swim, get on the left side. Those of you who don't can swim, get on the right side. He said, we're going to ditch the plane. So he ditched the plane. He said, those of you on the left side are going to swim, he said, swim toward the Kennedy Airport. Those of you on the right are not going to swim, he said, I'll even at you, and thank you for flying out of the Kennedy Airport. So, let me go on our uh, next trip, bro. I hope it's not on the Kennedy And especially not seat 38. That's just a little joke, because the last time we went, we were in 38, me and Orlando and my son John, and the, the, the people came up from the front and waited to, to 37, and the little guy came back from the other to 39, but no 38. They wouldn't wait on us. So I don't want to go back on 38. Jason said that was an applause. That was a no real applause. Anybody else have anything to say? Read the horse, read it. I can't tell. No, <laughs> no. Well, I tell you. Uh, I think a retirement's good for Jeannie. She's a changed person since she retired. When I come home, there's no more red face, there's no more fingers, with the hair, the hair standing up. She used to just, uh, you know, she, she just took her work with her all the time, and she was, uh, she got to be kind of serious about it. And I think that happened especially after her major surgery and her near-death experience. But uh, uh, Jeannie and I have uh, known each other for a long time, and uh, even before she came to live here, uh, I was helping her escape <laughs> from some of her, from some of her uh, situations. And um, we have been friends, and uh, it's nice to live with somebody that, um, that, that you love and that you can call a friend and that you can agree with or disagree with. And that's what Jean has been. And uh, all the time, she's been very caring, very supportive, and uh, anything um, good you could say about anybody, I could say about Jeannie. And it's been nice to have her, and I hope that she and I are together for a long, long time to come. Uh, I also, um, 
actually, you know, I'm, my my real name is um, is <laughs> is Bay Bomberg. Bay Bomberg. Bay Bomberg. Is that a thing?
That's it. Thank you all for coming over today. And uh, I think they're having another party next week, so we're going to have a good time. Yeah, we still have a good time. The party's going to be here for, in fact, it may last till next week, so you're all welcome to stay here. Yeah, so everybody help us up to the food. Yeah. 